sister. Thank you, Sister Judith. Um, bless you. Good morning to each and every one of us. Um, I pray that each and every one of us had a pleasant night. This um, and we are ready for Christ this morning. So let us begin with a word of prayer. Loving Father, as we sit at your feet this morning, help us to accept you and to surrender our will to you, dear Lord. All things work together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to your purpose. Help us, Lord Jesus. We are struggling and this at this time because the enemy has us bound. But when we go on our knees, we can plead the blood of Christ, the blood of the Lamb of our, on our hearts. We are strengthened when we know that one day there will be no more sin. But until that day, Lord, let us keep close to you and become partakers of your nature. Is my humble prayer this morning. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Amen. So um, we're going to sing number 318, Whiter Than Snow. Uh, it has four verses. We will take the first verse. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's it for Judy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, number two, we'll take that one. Thank you. Number three, we'll do three. Number four, thank you. I'll take it, please. Thank you. Thank you. In that order, please. Thank you. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want thee forever to live in my soul. Break down every I do, cast out every fall. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, look down from thy throne in the sky. And help me to make a complete sacrifice. I give up myself and whatever I know. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Lord, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, for this I most humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, at thy crucified feet. By faith, my, by faith for my cleansing, I see thy blood flow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, thou seest, I patiently wait. Come now and within me a new heart creates. To those who have sought thee, thou never said no. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful singing. Wash us, Lord, and make us whiter than snow is our prayer today. Okay, um, I'm not sure if the twins can project. 
Yes, uh, we can to quarter past six, and they've, they've, already, uh, they've got a meeting, so we can do it to quarter past six. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, summary of, to, of, of yesterday. Okay, we were talking about the Passover, and that was pointing to Christ. Um, and they couldn't see the significance of how important Christ was given his body. And they were blind by the truth that symbolized the, the pastoral service. And they just wanted to twist everything he said um, that, you know, uh, was pertaining to the truth. Um, they were jealous of him and jealous of the people that was flocking him because many people believed on him, uh, you know, um, because he spoke in love and, and he spoke with one who had authority. And we spoke about the word that became flesh in John 1, 1. Um, the, human, the human side of Jesus had to die, sacrificed, so we can receive life and life more abundant. And to live forever, we must accept the sacrifice of Christ's life. Our minds must be clear and not clouded with just the physical food, but the spiritual and through death. Could he impart life to us? And we also um, uh, spoke about reading the Bible and get a deeper meaning so that we won't be deceived um, by the, the, the devil that is coming to, to blind many of us, many people. And we just need to pray so that God can reveal us, reveal to us the understanding of his word. And um, we knew, we know, we also said that the Lord will provide for us in the time of trouble, you know, when God will look after his own, um, just like how he did when those were taken from Egypt. He also spoke about, um, they didn't want to know the knowledge of Christ and the Passover. Their heart was stubborn. And Christ um did made every effort you know to 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 fill them with the love yes but they were filled with wickedness and malice as it was read in first corinthians 5 yesterday um we are spiritual jews <clears throat> and the blood from the lamb was <clears throat> was him was christ and we are living um the life of sincerity what we are what are our habits now? What do we do now? What are we, our traits, the traits that we must um, pray to God that he will take away from us? Yes. <clears throat> and we must examine ourselves. Yes, because God wants a perfect heart. He wants us to be perfect like he is perfect um, as his father. And we need to be close to God. Yes, um, we need him to be um, our friend, our our father, our companion, our our leader, our director, our everything to us. And it also said that Christ is of no value if we do not feed on Him, speak to Him, and He will show us things and um, and tell Him what's in our heart. You know, um, running away from um, from Christ is is not the way. <laughs> We must accept him as our own personal saviour. Because everything um, that Christ does is um, is good, good, very good. He told us that in the beginning. Yeah, and also spoke about <clears throat> the enemy uh, will always remind us of our past sin. But God has a has a forgiveness. Yes, he will forgive as if we bring and we must believe. <clears throat> that he has forgiven us yes when we take our burdens to him um our burden of sin and you know he took our place when um when we should be in that place but no matter what burden we have we must present it to him yeah we need to accept his justification by faith he is bl he is blotting out our sins at this time in the most holy place Yes, he's doing a cleansing work in the sanctuary and we must develop a trust in him. 
because it's only him alone that will save us. So we ask God, ask the Lord to submit. Um, we, we must submit our will to him and just spend time in his presence. You know, um, what the food is to the body, Christ must be to our soul. So that was that's just a little summary of yesterday. Um, does anyone have anything um, else to say um, from yesterday's reading? Sorry, I can't see at the moment. Okay, so if not, then we'll we'll read on. I was just going to say there are no hands up, so I'll speak. <laughs> okay. Good morning, everyone. I just think you know, as somebody that's new to this, and it, it's just so beautiful, and it's just so true, especially you know when we experience it in our lives when. You know, it's difficult and the Lord is so caring, he's so tender. It just came to mind that it's like a child on a two-wheel bike, you know. And instead of giving the child the support with the, the little wheels on the side, the father's there catching the child as the child goes to fall off the bike. And he's always there making sure every single turn that he's there uh, to make sure that the kid doesn't fall off the bike and hurt itself. Yeah, sometimes we we feel a little bit disgruntled and we feel a little bit upset and we're a bit down. But you know, in the in in the in the entirety of it all, for one of a better way of putting it, you know, the child stays safe as the father makes sure that the child can get on the bike and ride the bike on its own. And be there on its own with knowing that the wheels are there to support it. That's, you know, that's our Holy Spirit. That's Christ there. He was the Father is there. And it's just so wonderful that it's exactly what he does. And, and we must be, you know, we must be in a, at the worst state we can get into before, you know, we actually realize how empty it can be. And I was talking to the Lord yesterday. I said, 56 years of feeding my flesh, basically. 56 years of doing whatever my flesh wanted. And now I'm trying to do completely the opposite. <laughs> and it's so difficult, brothers and sisters. I tell you, wow. I mean, it is just wow. But the Lord is so caring. He's so kind. And he just grabs me and takes me to prayer. And he just constantly talking to me he never leaves me and it's just so beautiful it's me that leaves him and and he calls out to me and I hear him and I go because I don't want to be I don't want to be bowing down to the flesh it's such a horrible place to be it's really empty it's dark it's cold it's not nice but when Christ is there calling us and you know and, and this is what he's doing throughout his word and throughout Spirit of Prophecy, it's just so beautiful. I mean, last night's um, Brother Michael was was just so lovely. It was so lovely to, to see between the lines and to be able to read what the Lord, as we go through these things earnestly, is there talking to us, guiding us, giving us truth. If we want the truth, he gives us the truth. And, I mean, I did ask, I can't remember the exact words I saw in the I can't remember where I saw it, to be honest, but we need to be, sometimes we need to be careful of the questions that we ask. And it was like, we need to be in the, pretty much our faces in the dirt. We need to be in the worst possible emotional place we can be before the Lord will intervene and help us. And I was like, wow, what does that mean? And sometimes you just need to be very careful of the questions we ask <laughs> because you're going to get shown. And, and it's not nice, but it gives you an understanding and a feeling to know exactly what it tastes like. And and we're 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 on trial, you know, we're in a trial. We are being tried. It's like we were talking about last night, you know. We're we're in the testing period. We're all being tested. And we don't know when any of us when that test is gonna end. And we need to repent every minute of every day and we need a Christ like character every minute of every day what a beautiful beautiful words to say that we we can we can 
assimilate his love and grace. We can take these things on in our lives. And it's just so, the word is just so beautiful. It's just such a blessing um, for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I just thank the Lord, constantly thanking him. And yeah, amen. Just so beautiful. Thank you. Amen, Brother Paul. Amen. You know, Christ wants to purge us. He wants to fine tune us to make us um, like he is. You know, it says in John, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat the, of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of this world. You know, we, we know that Christ is is come down to to make us clean, to make us, because where he's taken us, there is no sin. There is no sin. And this is this is the life that we have to live. Enoch walked in the sinful world, but he walked and he was he was um sin not sinless, but he he walked in the in in this in the law of God. So Christ wants us to walk in the in the same way. Any other comments, please? If not, we'll move on. Thank you, Brother Paul. Thank you. Um, we'll move on and we'll start from, are you a follow a follower of Christ? Can you read the next um, three paragraphs, please? Thank you. I can read. <clears throat> are you a follower of Christ? Then all that is written concerning the spiritual life is written for you and may be attained through uniting yourself to Jesus. Is your zeal languishing? Has your first love grown cold? Accept again of the proffered love of Christ. Eat of his flesh, drink of his blood, and you will become one with the Father and with the Son. The unbelieving Jews refused to see any except the most literal meaning in the Savior's words. By the ritual law, they were forbidden to taste blood and, and they now construed Christ's language into a sacrilegious speech and disputed over it among themselves. Many even of the disciples said, this is in hard saying, who can hear it? The Savior answered them, do this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Amen. Amen. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Major. Many questions. Many questions here. Are you a follower of Christ? Are we a follower of Christ? Is our zeal languishing? Is it fading? Is our love grown cold? Mercy. Mercy. This is where we ought to examine ourselves. And are we walking with the Lord? Is our life in tune with him? Yes, Christ is, is offering, offering again, you know, to eat and drink him. Yes, but they were so hard. They were still holding on to their customs. Yeah, they practice, they practice in their, their um, rituals, you know, and trying to interpret Christ's um, language, you know, and, and speaking, speaking blaspheme words against 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 um Christ but there are so many questions here that we ought to look for ourselves to see you know um is this us is this us brother Paul go ahead please yeah thank you it just reiterates what I was saying so I'm going to reiterate what I was saying and it's just it's just so beautiful it just puts a lovely smile on my face it makes me so happy that when we experience these things and we're actually living it and then we come here and we read it 
It's amazing how the Lord works. And I've noticed that year after year over the past few years. And it's always well timed. The Lord times it so perfectly. When he wants you to learn something, it just comes together. It's amazing how the the next Sabbath, the the the, the pastor that's come from, you know, it could be come from anywhere, you know. Um it could be Joseph Woodburn. Uh, does it, it, it could be somebody coming in from anywhere. And yet, you don't know them. They don't know you necessarily. And and yet, what they're saying is directly to you. It is, I mean, it could be focused on other people. Other people could be going through a similar thing. But you know that this message, the Lord is telling you that that message is for you. For you. you could also be in the Sabbath school. That message is for you. And it just goes through and he's just, constantly comes through it and it this is just for me the flesh profiteth nothing it does it does profit something it profits sadness darkness tears pain that's what it profiteth that is 100 percent what i've been going through 100 percent because i know that i'm in the fire i know i'm going through it and i run to god <laughs> i've run to him and i'm starting to learn that it, oh, to be spiritual is just so beautiful. And I'm just touching on it. I'm just sort of starting to get a feel for what it is. And it is just so beautiful. His words are so true. And, you know, it was beautiful to hear you say, sister, there are so many questions. There are so many questions. And you also asked another question. You asked, are we following God? I took that as a, as a personal question. We should all take that as a personal question. And should we should be jumping inside our flesh and we should be asking ourselves where are we in the scheme of things where are we in this walk am i aware of reality and what is going on around me and am i aware of what i am reading in spirit of prophecy in the bible when i'm reading it are they just words to me because if they're just words yeah it, it, it's like the Lord says, you know, I don't know you. He just spews us out. It's just, it, where does that get us? What's, you're just completely wasting time, your time. You're not wasting anybody else's time. But it's so important that if you find yourself in darkness spiritually or in your mind, that you just go to Christ. He's going to be there for you. That's what he did over and over, like the father with the child on the bike, over and over and over and over. All kids are different. Some kids going to jump on the bike and he's going to be like, go on, I love this is easy. And other people are just going to be, I'm the, I'm the other one. I'm the one that's going to take forever because I'm stupid. And I'm going to take forever and forever and forever on that bike. Because there's so many times I go to the Lord and I'm like, Lord, I'm not getting this. I'm just not getting it all. And, you know, even I just want to give a quick testimony before I finish. It's like, I'll be honest with you. My financial situation is dire. And. You know, we do our best not to, and I've had fraudulent activity on my account always, and um, and that hasn't helped. And I'm in such a dire situation. And um, I thought, right, because I always buy my water. I was making distilled water, but it just was proven to be far too expensive to make it, and I can't afford to buy it. And so I was just buying normal bottled water and filtering it, which isn't great. There's still 140-odd chemicals in bottled water, so it's not the best. But we do our best and we pray over it and we we hope the Lord's going to, oh, we have faith in God, don't we, to do these things for us. But and sometimes I wonder, because I thought, right, I haven't got the money to buy any water. So I know what I'll do is I'll just use tap water. There's 240 odd chemicals in British tap water. And uh, most of them, they don't know what they are. So personally speaking, if I was you, I wouldn't drink it. So anyway, um. I, th I said to myself, I know what I'll do. I'll use the tap water because I can't afford to buy water. Um, so I'll use the tap water and I'll pray over it. And I, the way that you get the answer from the Lord is, so last night, um, about, I don't know, half past five, six o'clock, somebody came and knocked on my door and just handed me 50 pounds cash. And he went, there you go. I was like, Lord. Lord, thank you so much. And this guy's not a Christian. I do try to very handle him with kid gloves because I, he's a very, very clever man. And so I know that he wants the truth as well. And he's, he loves to help people. So I know the Lord's working on him. He just doesn't see it. And But anyway, um, so he just came knocking the door and, and just handed me 
50 pounds cash. And he said, um, there you go. Uh, there's some cash for you. And I was like, brother, thank you very much. It's much appreciated. And I just went and prayed and thanked the Lord. Thank the Lord. He just, right at the last minute, desperately went and needed it. So there's some things, it's a bit like olive oil. I was going to buy this really cheap pomace oil, which is a mixture of not great stuff with olives. And it's mixed with 50% some other oil, some vegetable oil. And I said, I don't know what I'll do. I'm going to buy the cheap one because the olive oil itself is so, so expensive. I'm not going to buy that. And I thought, I'll get this one and I'll pray over it. And the Lord was like, no, you <laughs> get the olive oil. Get the olive oil. So I went and bought the good olive oil, which was like 40 odd quid for five liters. So it's really expensive. And so I got the good olive oil because the Lord told me to get the good olive oil. I'd already taken the other stuff off the shelf and put it on, on my basket in the in the in bookers. And um and the Lord was like, No, get the good stuff. So sometimes, you know, it, it it's a bit like the water, you know. He didn't want me to drink and pray over the water. He wanted me to go and get the good water or the better water. So, yeah, I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Amen, Brother Paul. Boil your water before drinking it, especially tap water. Yes. God only wants the best for us. Um, you know, Mary Magdalene, yeah, he cast seven devils out of her. But knowing that he cast seven devils out of her, that means she went back to him all the time. And that's what we have to do, go back to him all the time. When we fall, when things happen, when um, we are um, perplexed all around, you know, um, we must go back to him. And he will. He said he's never le leaving us or forsaking us. So, yes, he will. Prayer retreat. Not sure who that is. Go ahead, please. Oh, sorry, it's me, Sister Adeline. Thank you so much and good morning everyone on the platform. Uh, thank you, Brother Paul, for your testimony um, of trusting God in all things. Uh, I just wanted to comment about the work of the Holy Spirit because we are told here in the last paragraph uh, that it is the spirit that quickened, the flesh profiteth nothing. The ways that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Without the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to do anything in our lives. A lot of times we struggle with a lot of things because we don't ask for the Spirit to guide us. And the Spirit can only be, can only come in us when we we obey. I just wanted to read um, in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 3. It says, uh, 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 3, verse, verse 3. For, for as much as we are manifested to declare to be epistles of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but the spirit of the living God, not on the tablets of stone, but in the, in the flesh tablets of the heart. So we notice here, the one who writes the commandments of God in our hearts, in our heart, is the Spirit of God. That is the work of the Spirit of God. And so if we keep the commandments of God um, without the Holy Spirit, then we will be just like these people, um, the Jews. They kept the commandments. To them, the commandments were just there to be kept and to to. Yes, but they did not have the love, the spirit of God. So everything which Christ was saying, they hated it because it was a reflection of their character against each one of them. How can this man say this? How can he say we should be eating the flesh? And because if we operate on a, on a, if we allow our flesh to over, to, to rule what we, you know, the lust of our eyes, the pride of our life. And we ask the flesh to, to dominate in everything which we do. Then even if we try to keep the commandments, we'll be frustrated because it's, those are spiritual. Those are, it's, it's all spirit which is able and able. This is why you find even in the church, you hear, 
ah, the head elder, or oh, the elder is got an affair with this one. You're wondering, but the head elder is because the head elder is is keeping the commandments. He is keeping the commandment, but in the flesh, he has not been converted. Paul says that to for us, uh, sorry, um, in in the book of Acts, for us to receive the Holy Spirit, we've got to be converted in our hearts and then get baptized, and then we will receive the Holy Spirit. But if there's no conversion, then there is a problem because the spirit is the one who writes those, uh, the, you know, the laws on the tablets of our hearts. Without the spirit, then nothing, nothing good will come out of us because our hearts are desperately wicked and deceitful. So we need to surrender our hearts so that the Holy Spirit can write those laws in our hearts, not us trying to keep the law, trying to keep the commandments, trying to do what is good, but no, it's to surrender to Christ. And then he will write, he will write those, the, the spirit will write those. Uh, so the work of the Holy Spirit is, is, is so much that, you know, we, we do not, we pray that we do not offend bruise the Holy Spirit. We do not offend the Holy Spirit in our lives because when the Spirit departs from us, then nothing, nothing good will come out of us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen, sister. Thank you. Yes, the heart is desperately wicked. When we, try, when we try to do all this, um, you know, in our own strength, we we profit nothing we we gain we go nowhere um in on our own we must be converted um sister sharon and then the tatley twins thank you uh, good morning you know as we can see from this paragraph that when we follow christ unless there is a spiritual link with us and him we will follow with in the flesh you know, the, these people were only following with their hands out to Christ to meet their physical needs. So they saw that he could do miracles. They, they kept on following. So we can see that miracles does not convert the heart of man. It is the spirit that changes the mindset of man. And if we do not have that change of mindset. Anything that God asks us to do, we will struggle. So if God says to you, uh, I, I want you to do country living, you can't do that because you're going to say, this is a hard saying. When I've got my, you know, I've got my three bedroom house in, in, the, in the city of London, I've got all the connections to all the, the wonderful places in London. Why would you want me to go into some, go, go up north to go and dig up the ground where there's no sunshine? How can I grow things in, in, in that condition? No, that's a hard saying. I won't move. Or if God says to you, you know what? I want you to change the way that you, you dress. I don't want you in, in high heel shoes. And you're going like, Lord, that, that's a hard saying. I look cute when I wear my high heel shoes. You can't take this away from me. And so when we look at the children of, of or the Jewish nation, when if they had the very embodiment of Christ before them and they struggled to make that, ex that spiritual exchange, yielding the flesh to spiritual things, what about us? Anything but God asks us to surrender unless we are willing to surrender each day. Put Ask God to put enmity between those things that keep us away from him. We will be very much like these people and say it is a hard saying. May God have mercy upon us. Amen. Amen. May mercy be on us. 
we must be transformed. We must. The Tatley twins, go ahead, please. Yes, good morning. Um, they, they seem to take everything Jesus said, they took it literally. They didn't understand the spiritual meaning of it, you know, to drink his blood, eat his flesh and drink his blood. And we know that their blood was forbidden. Um, and it still is forbidden today. There are people who eat meat. Very little of it is koshered. You know, they, they may either should eat the meat if they're going to eat it. You know, the, the blood is dripping in it and um, they have these rare steaks and that. And there's Adventists do as well, don't they? And, but, you know, they took it literally and, and they was offended by it because they thought we, we're not supposed to have blood. And, um, you know, they kept, they stuck, stuck to the, the how the, if they ate meat, they, took, they stuck to it, how, um, how the, um, it should be done, you know, uh, koshered. And so they, so they took everything literally, what he, what he said, and then got offended. And they were just looking for ways to um, marginalise him and do, you know, and um, speak against him and turn turn the uh, people against him. That's what they was doing. And, uh, you know, that was sad. Yes, it is sad, you know, when we, when, when those Jews... And not even the not even them alone, you know. When we all do that, um, you know, where where are we going with all of that? It's, it, it is sad. Prayer retreat. I'm not sure who that is. Prayer retreat. Go it's, ahead. Yes, thank you. Oh, it, it, yes, thank you. It's me again. Um, yes, when Sister um, Sharon was just saying that it, it, this is a hard saying. You you can just see that the uh from a personal level the battle is always raging. That hey, Lord, but this, but this, you want this as well, Lord. You want this as well, and and when it it's 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 what is very comforting is when we then learn to surrender that thing which you have been battling with. You know. There is such a peace and comfort and joy. Jesus gives you joy after that. Initially, you are tempted not to, you are saying, oh, no, but this is just, you know. Um, I know, like, for instance, when I, when I gave meat, when I gave it up, meat, eating meat, I was thinking, I don't know whether I'm ever going to be able to, to overcome this. But really, God, I've I've understood why this is this is good for for me to leave all these things, and I I'm just asking now for your power. And when He finally gives you the power and you've yielded to to that, then you you when you look back, you say, "How on earth was I able to eat this?" You know, you you start asking yourself, how how was I able to even eat this? And you see that oh, I, I can't even go there anymore because he's given you victory over that thing. And then another thing comes. I have to, you know, Lord, this Lord shows you, you you you. We study these things, and you say, Oh Lord, I'm failing there because the word of God, as Sister White say, has got the power to transform us when we obey it. It's not that everything we are good or whatever, but when we hear that thing, first, first time you hear, you have to give up this thing. You cannot do that. You cannot. Initially, yeah, uh, it's a struggle. But then when you pray and you ask God that, Lord, I want victory over this thing, Lord, you are the only one who can enable me. I am giving this to you. That's that's surrendering. I'm I, because I cannot. It is so important because uh, there are some of us who are struggling with each one of day. day there is always something which you are struggling with. But when we surrender that thing, when we finally surrender, because it's a struggle. The the enemy does not want you to struggle. To I mean to to surrender. The old man wants to 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 keep ruling. But when you surrender now, the spirit is taking over now. You will find that uh, uh, the joy and the peace of that thing is just so much that you, you even smile. 
So it's not that we are all perfect in whatever. That's why it's sanctification. We are justified when we come to Christ. But sanctification, it's a, it's a life process. We are learning and God is hewing and skewing this thing, that thing, that thing. And the next thing again, oh Lord, it's a daily surrender. That's why it's a daily surrender. It's not, it's not, oh, I'm perfect now. No, we every, because of our, our humanity, we will go through these struggles. Some of them personal, some of them thrown by the devil. Some of them out of our own lust, out of our pride, of our life, pride, whatever. But as we go on, that's the sanctification process. We are sanctified by his word. You hear this thing. We he you hear this thing on the prayer platform as we are doing but Bible studies. You say, Lord, I really fall short. It's not about looking at somebody to say, ah, but these ones are doing this. It's about you. Ah, but Lord, here I am also falling short. Oh Lord, I am so sorry. I really want to surrender this. And that's how it, it goes. That's how it goes until he comes again. When he, when this when this nature, this human nature has been taken out of us, but as we are on this journey, it's a daily surrender. It's not just a come and surrender. It's surrendering those things which you know that God, they are not of God. And he points that to you. He points, that's why you need to read this word. And when we are reading this word, he's pointing to those things. This I don't want. This my child I don't want. He's speaking to us every day through his word for us to be sanctified. That's why he says, Sant be sanctified by the truth. The truth is which is his word. Thank you. Amen, sister. It is a struggle when we try to do things on our own. When we, because I remember I I struggled with, with meat. Um, you know, everyone is in their own, have their own, their own struggle. But I struggled with meat for a long time. And I'm getting over, you know, God has given me the victory to, to, to put it down to, to, there are things that, you know, you can eat without, um, without meat, but I didn't know this. And, you know, to be tempted, the devil will always put things in, in front of us so that we can stumble. Because when you, you think that you've got the victory over it, he brings something else. And it's always a struggle, but run to God. He will, he will sustain us. Sister Hope, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Sister Erlene, and uh, good morning all. Um, indeed, uh, uh, that is why Christ is a teacher. Uh, what a wonderful teacher. Uh, because um, what was he teaching there? And uh, he was teaching them the right way of doing things and uh, and he's also doing the same you know it's not an easy thing to let go of something uh, unless you are taught you know so many times we um i remember also in my journey when we we're talking about you know the food we should not eat this food you should not but what is behind it because people need to learn. We need to learn, right? We, and uh, coming out with uh, certain statements, it, it can be indeed very hard unless you give a reason. You teach someone, uh, you teach about how the food is being contaminated. You teach about uh, um, all these things that are having a, an unknown effect on our lives. Um, and, in, and indeed, as our sister was saying, that uh, um, the times when we wear those high-heeled shoes, why shouldn't we wear those high-heeled shoes? And there has to be reasons. And many times, also in our own walk of life, even with our children, we could say to the children, do not touch the radiator. But why? We have to give reasons why. And then you let that child, um, after explaining and, 
and the experience or is that why mom is not uh, is not allowing me to touch the radiator because once i i touched it i got burnt so it, it's good to help us to have teachable hearts and as indeed it's the holy spirit that teaches because he says everything we have to be taught however these people were also did not want to be taught they they had the unbelieving spirit whereby although they saw the things that they saw they saw what christ did but they were darkened by their own uh, their own um uh, 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 perhaps their own ways and they did not want to change and that is the spirit that god gives us and uh, Christ is saying to us, even today, we, we are, but we have to make choices. But time and time again, when we are faced with change, we're always asking why. But at the same time, we need to know why do we need this change, right? And, and we know that our spiritual walk, as our brother was saying, that unless we, we are connected with God, God will continue to help help us and, 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 and allow us to go through certain circumstances if we have the teachable spirit to learn from it, right? So that we do not even go back. And if we go back, we still have to go back to him. I have failed. Help me in this. But we have to have a teachable spirit because it says that children taught by Christ, they'll have peace. And if you do not have that peace, then who is teaching you? Who is teaching me? Then it's going to be a different spirit. Amen. Amen, sister. Amen. Um, Brother Paul and then Sister Matron. Thank you. Yeah, I just carrying on from what my sister said. It's so true, you know. The amount of times I go, Lord, 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 I'm getting sick of coming to you and constantly asking for you to forgive me. I was getting fed up with it. And the Lord was then showing me, hey, who do you think that is? And I'm like, wow. You know, and I'm going to bring this up again because it still shocks me to my core. It's like when people make decisions, oh, I'm going to move to the country. Okay. And it's like I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday and uh, these two people that I would say, I'm, I'm not judging them all. I mean, I'm just going by what I feel the God has shown me is that they're not evenly yoked and they got married and they're very happy. Amen. Great. Fantastic. But let's start at the crux of the matter is they're not evenly yoked. So we've we've got to make sure that when we make decisions, we are doing it with God. It's dead simple. It's really simple. Everything with God is really, really, really simple. And sometimes you just feel so stupid. I feel so stupid sometimes. And I take it to the Lord, and I'm I'm not so sure he's giggling. I'm We might be giggling, and we might, you know, I, I do like seeing pastors that have got a sense of humor, but I, I never see the Holy Spirit smiling or laughing. It's a very, very serious, serious, serious matter, what we're going through. But thank God for our sense of humor. And, you know, the point I wanted to make was that I sort of lost my direction. Um is that it is so important that, and that's what I was going to say. I was going to tell you that, that, that what happened to me, I'm going to say it again because it's so important. I said to myself, I'm not going to go to church today. I, I, I didn't say I'm not going to go. I said, I don't feel like it. Man, I don't think I'll go. And then I turned to God and I was like, which is something I'm learning. Everything we need to learn, that everything we do, we need to turn to God. And that is something that we must learn. Just like a bad habit, we can learn good habits. And it's just about repeating it. I mean, when I went to bed last night, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, I just kept saying it. I've got to turn to Jesus. I've got to turn to Jesus. I've got to turn to Jesus. Every single time, I've got to turn to Jesus. I've got to turn to Jesus. This is how we form a good habit. You've just got to repeat it over and over and over and over again to yourself. And then before you know, it becomes automatic. So when you're in that sin, you're not saying to yourself, I need to turn to Jesus or I need to do this or I need to turn whatever it is. It becomes an automatic. You, it may seem tedious at the beginning that you've got to keep saying yourself this. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I've done it. It works. Oh, 100 percent. It works. And you just before you know it, it's an automatic reaction. 
And so when that voice, that voice, which I thought was me, and even today I would say, you know, apart from the fact that the Holy Spirit has told me otherwise, I would say it was me, was that it was Satan. It was the Holy Spirit came back to me and said, Paul, it wasn't you. That was Satan that was talking to you. We cannot make a decision on our own. We can't. We we cannot be guaranteed that this is one of the scariest things that I have learned, but it's not there to, for fear, obviously. It's there for knowledge and truth. This is truth, and this is why sometimes the truth is it can be painful. But at the same time, it's beautiful, because now we know, guess what? Turn to God. Turn to God. Ask him for every single little thing. You know, it's like, is the business going to fail? I don't know. Um, ask God. Well, I just have to leave it in his hands, because I, I just got to trust in God. This is where trust and faith, love, you know, this is where the spirit really starts to work on us, and it's just so beautiful. But the, the the main reason I wanted to say something was because I wanted to talk about the water, and you know, and, and we need to research. The Bible tells us to prove all. It just it says all things, you know. But I do hear people. No, 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 no. That means um, sort of spiritually and biblically, you know. That's not what I'm feeling. So I, I feel that the Lord tells me, Paul, you're right. It means all. Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good so for me i proved about the water i proved about boiling boiling water you can do what you like with the water it's not gonna make no difference you know i'm not killing the 240 odd um chemicals that are inside that water you're just not doing it the water is not fit for nothing it's poison now why do i bring these things up why is meat poison why shouldn't we eat meat why shouldn't we drink the water why shouldn't we put cosmetics on our skin why shouldn't we do all these things apart from the obvious so ellen white tells us that it's to make us strong to do the lord's work amen fantastic but guess what else it does it blocks your spiritual connection so all the contaminants that come into your body are going to make your walk with the spirit harder so i see people that can't they don't feel the spirit talking to them because it's a distant voice, because they're doing so many sinful things that they don't realize against the spirit. The spirit can't get in. They can't hear the Holy Spirit. But some people, they automatically go through these things, and yet they they hear the Holy Spirit, but they don't realize it's the Holy Spirit. I mean, I was similar to that. I was, I was doing all these good things in my life, but I didn't realize, and the, I, I know now that it was God that was leading me. I just want to get back to the water. Look, the best water you can drink is distilled. That is the best water that you can drink. Um, I think there are other waters where they put um, minerals and what have you into the water. Um, and there are machines that you can get. That's all great. I'm not talking. I'm just talking about. So the basic waters, bottled water, tap water, distilled water. Out of the three of them, I've tested all three of them. Bottled water, there was 170 odd chemicals. Tap water, 243 chemicals. Distilled water, zero. So that's why I drink, and I tested them myself. I've done it myself, so I don't care what anybody else says with respect. Um, but I 100% know that um, even filtered water, that still had loads of chem. They don't, they're useless. If you research these things, they're useless. Boiling water is useless. And uh, these things are here to cause us harm. They're not a good thing. They're there to cause us harm, just like the the cloud seeding and the the harp stuff. This isn't this isn't myths. This is reality. They are doing it to take away the sun and to cause us all kinds of. Let's not go into that. Just want to stick to the water. We need to prove all things, and the proof of the pudding is distilled water is the best water you can drink. Do not drink tap water. That's that's just my my uh, my advice, and I obviously hundred percent recommend it that people research for themselves. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Speak to God. Take take everything to him in prayer. Sister Matron, please. Yes. yes, good morning, uh, everyone. I just want to, you know, comment on this very one line <laughs> that is just in my mind. This is a hard saying. Who can hear it as they were talking between one another, the, the the people were listening to Jesus, and which is what uh, we all find ourselves caught in. You know, when the Bible tells us that he, the dragon was cast down from heaven, that great deceiver. 
you know, the deception doesn't come openly. If the deceptions were open, we would be able to be wise to run away. But he, we are so deceived in a very hidden way, in a subtle way, as the Bible says, uh, in agreement with all the comments that have been coming, that we find ourselves, you know, you have something that is so hard that you can't come out from it. It's it's, it's a hard saying, as uh, Sister Sharon said earlier on, that... Um, you feel I can't I can't manage to do without this. It's it's like a demon possession. You're possessed by a spirit. So the spirit possesses, you know, us in so many ways that you you just find yourself craving something that you are powerless, you become very powerless, that you can't you you can't manage to resist it. Um I remember myself who I yes, I sh I should say I was demon possessed, really, because I the way I loved chicken so much that even when it's not cooked wherever, I could smell it when it's not even there at all. Even when I'm walking in the forest, um, I could smell it. <laughs> That's po demon possessed, possessed, you know, to to just like it. And I would say, when I get home, I have to I have to go and cook it. I have to go and cook it. That's how I was, I was so so deep in there. It's very hard when we receive the word of God in our own flesh, you know, without surrendering fully ourselves to God. It took me um, prayer and fasting for me to come out of the chicken. I never, ever, ever knew that I was going to come out of chicken, really, because of the way how it had got into me. I could feel it within me. I could smell it anywhere. And that would drive me to go and, and cook it. And I would cook it in so many different styles to make sure I really was in it. It's a hard saying when Jesus was explaining to people because they were deep in, in whatever they loved to do. That only is the way of the devil to deceive, to deceive us. And yet uh, the Bible here tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. It's very difficult to hear the voice of God or the voice of the Holy Spirit when you are still possessed in that area, whether it's high heeled shoes, as other people were saying, or whether it's, it's a miniskirt or whatever it is, or eating chicken like I was myself, or eating meat or something. As long as we are still within the, the flesh, it's very difficult to hear the truth. My, the 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 son of my aunt. Uh, I remember when he came home. I was twenty three years old here with my grandmom, and um, she, I could hear strongly saying, "You should not marry another wife because the Bible doesn't allow us. We are standing on the truth. The truth is one wife. That is all." And I could remember my. My the, the 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 son of my auntie strongly arguing with my grandmom. He wanted the woman enter. I remember very well my grandmom stood up and she slapped him on the face in front of this other second woman that he was trying to bring in the home. She slapped him. And when she did that, he roared. You know, the roar that came from him, like I don't know, like a lion or like a like a like an ox that is oxen that is being killed or something or whatever. This is when I can I can you know connect to say when somebody's in this the, the situation that they are in, whether it's drugs, whether it's in drinking alcohol, whatever, they are possessed. It's a demon that is overpowering them. This is where we need to pray for one another, to pray earnestly for those that we see. They are hooked into their their. Um, they, they they can't they can't they, they are not hearing it's a hard saying they are not hearing they they air the sensibilities of hearing and everything is overpowered by the devil we need to pray for one another other than that the whole the the spirit that holds people captive is so strong and in them in themselves they are very powerless i was very powerless in this chicken thing but only god and god alone can help us amen Amen. Thank you, sister. Amen. The struggle is very, very real. 
and we all well I know I go go through that struggle every day so and um, thank you each and everyone for um tarrying with us and I hope everyone had a um a blessing this morning hearing all that is those beautiful comments um sister matron can you give us a closing prayer please Yes, sure. Let us pray to our Father what in heaven this morning. We're so thankful and so grateful, Lord, that you are always with us. And we thank also the presence of the Holy Spirit, who is able to guide us into all truths. And uh, you allow us, in our sinful nature, to discuss, together sharing with one another uh, all these fantastic and beautiful points that you see it fit that we can learn between ourselves. It would have been so much very scary for us to hear that uh, or to see angels coming to address us in every meeting or to see the Holy Spirit in himself to come and address us in every meeting. It would be very scary, but you allow us as human beings to just share this is how much you love us, Lord. Thank you so much. And may you help us as we have learned this, that as we walk away from here this morning, may our minds continue to meditate upon each and every point that uh, the Holy Spirit has helped every one of us to, to utter, to help one another, that we will be able even to share with uh, other people that we meet with or mingle with in our families, at workplaces, in you know, communities, wherever we live, that will not cower away or shy away to speak the truth. So be with us, Father, forgive us of our sins. And where we have failed, Lord, we pray that you hold us, strengthen us, encourage us, and help us to walk in the right way that you want us to walk, Father. Keep us faithful until you return. For we have prayed this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Major, for your beautiful prayer. And we have come to the end um, of our se session this morning. And I pray that each and every one have a blessed day. I'm just going to give the announcement. At 12 midday, we have the midday prayer. At 6.30, we have the song service. At 7, we have another message from Brother Martin. Um, and I pray each and every one join that message because it is for the today, the message for today. So thank you each and every one and have a blessed day. Amen. Thank you. God bless everyone. Have a good day. Amen. Bye. Amen. God bless. Amen. God bless. Bye.